Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, I hope you're well. Today's video is going to be my top books of 2015. I gave 12 books in 2015 a 5 out of 5 star review. I loved all these for various different reasons and I thought I'm not bothered about doing a top 10 or anything like that so I thought I'd just do a top 12. And here they are, here are my top 12 books of 2015. As usual, I will leave links for all of them down in the description bar below, so if you find that any of them are of any interest to you, just click the link and you'll go straight to it. I have to say, these are in order, so we're going to start with number 12, my 12th favourite, and we'll go, go all up to my very best favourite of the year, which I'm so excited about. So, let's get straight into it. So, number 12 is a good old favourite author of mine, that's Agatha Christie, and number 12 we have Sleeping Murder, which is Miss Marple's last case. The story of this one is a young woman called Gwenda who buys a house, but as soon as she buys the house she kind of gets these thoughts and these feelings of um, wallpaper should be this certain way and then they take it down to reveal that it was that certain way. And oh a door should be put there and then they find out oh a door was there and she's having all these different kind of weird thoughts and feelings and then she has a weird thought that actually a murder took place in the house. And of course, you guessed it, Miss Marple comes in and sorts it all out and works out, works out the murder and everything like that because she's Miss Marple and she's awesome. This book's great. It was the last one, but it's a good one to end on and one that you should all definitely check out. The next book, a number 11 slot, is The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. I did a review of this, so if you want to know more about it, I'll leave it in the description box below and you can go and check it out there. But this book was fantastic. I really enjoyed Henry James's writing. I know some people don't get on with him that well, but I actually really enjoyed it. It's about a young woman called Isabel, who's a young American woman. She comes from America to England to spend some time with her family. While she's in England, she meets many suitors, and they, a lot of them ask for her hand in marriage, and for whatever reason, she declines. Eventually, she accepts someone's hand in marriage, which isn't really the best person to accept. But anyway, the, the story goes on from there and I won't say any more because I will spoil it and I don't want to. This book is definitely one of those books that has people completely split over the ending. I think that the ending was the most realistic one, although I like to think that it wouldn't happen now. It might do, but hopefully not. <laughs> I still really enjoyed this and this has one of the best opening lines in literature ever. Um, all about afternoon tea. And who doesn't love afternoon tea? So, number 11. Into my top 10 now, and the book that takes my number 10 slot is Sparkling Cyanide by Agatha Christie. This is a hardbacky version that I got with a magazine years ago. And I will leave the link to a really nice copy that I want to get my hands on, which is the mass market size paperback. And it's red and it's got a picture of um, a champagne glassy fluty thing. It's beautiful and I want to get my hands on that one. But I don't mind, this is still nice. But anyway, the story of Sparkling Cyanide is one that you can probably guess. Someone gets murdered by having cyanide put in their glass, which must be a very uncomfortable way to die. But this book was incredible. Her standalones for me are kind of hit and miss. I have read a couple of incredible ones. I've read a couple of all right ones. For instance, The Pale Horse, it was all right. But, and then there were none, and Sparkling Cyanide, utterly amazing. I know so many people go on about and then there were none, and it's the most popular um, book that she's written, and the most popular crime book selling some stupid, obscene amount of books. But this book is so incredible. More people need to read this. Need to read this. I can't even speak now, I'm getting that excited. It's so good, so... If you're interested in someone getting murder by cyanide being put in their glass, read this one. Number nine is a comic book. Who'd have thought it? Um, but it's GC Comics Batgirl Volume 2, Nightfall Descends. Look how cool she is. Ooh. Um, Batgirl was one of these things to me that I read Volume 1, I gave it four out of five stars. And then I was thinking this is either going to be really good or it's going to go really plop. When I read Supergirl, I gave the first one, I think I gave that four stars as well. But then it went a bit plop, and I'm not going to carry on with the series. Catwoman, Volume 1 and 2 were awesome. They're incredible. But then in Volume 3, they changed the writer, and then it went plop as well. But I have to say, 
Black Girl went from volume one, which is really good, to volume two, which was amazing. We learn so much about herself and her family. It's incredible. There isn't this kind of blokes going in there and having to, you know, fix the problem. There's no, you know, usually what you have in these kind of things is the male counterpart really getting involved. So in her case, she's Batgirl. So we have Batman or Robin sometimes, you know, getting all in there and just having to solve the situation for her. None of that. She does it all by herself. Um, sometimes she does have a few female friends but most of the time it's just her doing it by herself and this book swiftly moves from kind of comic book cool to a weird crime mystery with her and her family what was going on with her mom and her brother and I cannot wait to read volume three and I don't have it yet I need to get it because I think it's going to be awesome but this one leaves you in a bit of a cliffhanger and it's amazing if you're if you're not really that much into kind of comic superheroes but you do like crime you will like this it's awesome at number eight funnily enough is another comic book whoopsies i didn't mean to put these next to each other but it just so happens that they are but it is wonder woman volume four war i have never given a wonder woman comic book less than five stars because these are awesome and as usual war was utterly incredible i love wonder woman i love her strength i love her power i i love the fact that she is you know a demigod and a, and a princess and yeah oh, just awesome if you haven't read um the new 52 wonder woman i would advise you do it i know some people aren't too keen on the artwork because it is very much um kind of typical superhero artwork but i actually quite enjoy it so if you do all don't mind it then pick it up at number seven lucky seven i have a non-fiction that is the lady in the tower the fall of Anne Boleyn by alison weir oh guys oh guys i love this book this book is so good and there i have read so many books on Anne Boleyn and i've read a lot of books on the fall of Anne Boleyn and so many of them have annoyed me <laughs> it's untrue this one didn't annoy me this one seemed to get me and understand me and knew where I was coming from. Um, something that you might not know about me is for a very long time I've been thinking about writing a book and I often write little snippets here and there and a lot of the snippets that I've written are books on Anne Boleyn, um, non-fiction, not fiction. I don't know if I, I don't think I could write a fiction to be honest. Um, I, I think I've always ended up writing non-fiction and I, I I just love Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn is someone that I've studied for such a long time. She's someone that I write about. Um, and it's really nice to have a really good, well thought out book about her. This isn't a book about her per se, it's a book about her fall. So if you're interested in learning about Anne Boleyn as a woman, don't go here because this is just her um, decline and why she was executed. But fantastic and if you are a fan of Anne Boleyn but you're um kind of like me and a bit annoyed about how other people describe her fall from power then read this one because whoopee number six I have Patience by John Coates which is the beautiful Persephone and again I've done another review of this this was in my Persephone um book reviews number one I really loved this book this was so good it's about a family in the 1950s being hit with adultery and what happens when you're having an affair and you're catholic and it's about morals and sex and family and social social history even and it's great it's fantastic it, it, it's so emotional it's so hard hitting and that ending was just ridiculous but amazing so patience and I, I've spoken about this quite a lot and I don't know if anyone has then gone and read it so if you have read it from my review if you could let me know down in the comment section down below I'd, I'd love to know so I'm now into my top five books of 2015 and the book in the number five slot is The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie this is my winning Agatha Christie book of the year da, da, da. This was a whole new level of what on earth. 
This, I have to admit, is my only Agatha Christie book that I've ever read to date that I've actually been thoroughly spooked. The reason why I like Agatha Christie is because it doesn't make me jump, it doesn't make me scared, it doesn't make me worried, it doesn't make me paranoid. Until I read this. And I was all of those things. And I hate being scared and I hate being on edge. But I didn't mind it with this one because this one is incredible. David Suchet does say, has said in interviews before, this would make an amazing film. And now I've read it, it honestly would. If you've never read it before, there is a murderer out there who murders people in a certain place with a certain surname. So we'll start at the beginning of the alphabet with A. So they will murder someone in a place beginning with A and mur the murder victim will be someone with the surname of A. And then once they're murdered, they live the ABC railway guide next to the body. And it goes B, C, onwards. So they're a very twisted individual and it's a very twisted story, but honestly incredible. And Poirot, fantastic, amazing. 10 out of 10, a million out of 10. Just awesome. And of course, Captain Hastings is in this as well. So, best of both worlds. At number four, we have Map and Lucia by E.F. Benson. I have this beautiful copy here with these lovely thirties ladies. Again, I've done a review of this, so I'll leave it down below. But it's these two women in the 1930s going completely at each other, trying to be Queen Bee of society. It's a bit like Miss Marple without the murders. Um, a bit like Hyacinth's bouquet in Keeping Up Appearances. It's very funny, it's very witty, incredible. If you really like the BBC adaptation, then I'd say what, read this because it's super. They've got that really down to a T. I am definitely going to pick up the other ones in the Map and Lucia series and read them because this was amazing. I do have to say though, that if you are not a fan of British comedy, don't read this because you'll probably just find it a bit annoying to be honest. But if you do like British comedy, then read this because it's awesome. Number three of my top books of 2015 was Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Woo! Again, I've done a review of this down below. Oh God, I love this book. I'm currently reading Emma by Jane Austen as well actually. Maybe that'll be in my 2016 top books. We shall see. Jane Austen never fails to disappoint me. I really love her writing. She is funny, she is witty, she is warm. Whenever I read her books, I feel like I'm coming home. I just love her. And Mansfield Park is fantastic. So if you haven't read it, go read it or check out my review. <laughs> So my second favourite book of 2015 and I have to say my favourite fiction book of 2015 is Jane and Prudence by Barbara Pym. Woo! I loved this. Again, I've done a review of this. Link will be down below. But it's about two women, Jane, Prudence. Jane is a vicar's wife. She lives in the countryside. Prudence is this young 50s um, modern well, a modern 50s chick. She lives in London, she's in love with her boss. Jane, she wants to set Prudence up with other people in the village and play a bit of matchmaking. It's awesome, it's fun. It's very different to Excellent Women. If you like the fast pacedness of Excellent Women, don't expect that here. You do get the fast pacedness, that's not a word, um, when we're reading about Prudence in London. You feel the hubbub of London, but when you're back with Jane, which you spend most of the story, it's nice and slow and tranquil and it's amazing and lovely and smashing. So, Ooh. And lastly, my ultimate favourite book of 2015 and a book that has now definitely worked its way into my favourite books of all time is The Strangest Family, The Private Lives of George III, Queen Charlotte and the Hanoverians by Janice Hadlow. This is a non-fiction book about George III and his family and the Hanoverians in general. And holy smokes guys, this is utterly incredible. Again, review is down below. It is my favourite book. It is a non-fiction book. 
it did make me cry. I have never had a non-fiction book that's ever made me cry. I mean, I've only had one book that made me cry anyway, but to make me cry at non-fiction was incredible. It's emotive and um, my best YouTuber friend and from Beyond the Pages, um, she's now currently reading this and she's like, I'm loving it. And I'm like, yay. So I'm trying to spread, um, spread the joy about this and everyone that's been asking me for the um, reviews to do the booktuber recommendations thing I've I've been saying this one because this is incredible and more people need to read this and well done Janice Hadlow for producing this incredible book after 10 years of hard work it is thoroughly amazing and you should be very proud because this is honestly it's absolutely amazing and if you are at least a tiny bit teeny tiny bit interested in the Georgians pick it up it yes it's huge but take your time over it it reads like fiction it doesn't read like a fact book at all and it's lovely and amazing and yeah woo. so that is it that is my top books of 2015 I have read some thoroughly amazing books I have been very spoilt I feel very grateful for reading some of these amazing reads so take care, have a lovely day, and I shall see you soon for the next video. Bye.